Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today I wanna to quickly show you how to install this guy. So what this is, is an outlet with a built-in 3.1 amp USB port, which isn't that fancy. There's plenty of outlets out there which either have the standard USB or USB-C integrated into the design, but this has a wireless wall plate or really a cradle that you can set your phone in, and if your phone has wireless charging capability, it will start charging. Pretty cool. This looks like it might need two different receptacles to fit because it is the width of two, but actually there's only a single receptacle you'll be swapping out and then installing this new one. And then the actual plate itself, the wireless charging plate will hang off to the side. So I'll show you how to do the install. Additionally, I'm going to do a little testing on the charging speeds. So let's jump in and show you how to install this device. The way we start any of these projects is use an outlet tester or non-contact voltage tester so we can test to make sure the power is off. So we know both these work. Now I'll go flip my breaker that feeds this circuit. And then I'll jump back with my outlet tester or my non-contact voltage tester and confirm that there's no power. Once that's confirmed, now I'm going to remove the cover plate and then start to remove the two mounting screws here for the actual receptacle. Once those are removed, I'll pull the receptacle out of the box and I have plenty of wire. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut my two neutrals my two hots, and the ground. If you're limited on a wire, I would not cut these free. I would save those J hooks. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a pigtail, which is gonna work for when you have two sets of wires or three sets of wires. I'll just use 12 two Romex here and use the black and white for my actual pigtails. If you're not sure if you have 12 gauge or 14 gauge, just use some pocket change. You can use a nickel, and the thickness of a nickel is actually very similar to 12 gauge thickness. So I have 12 gauge. You could compare that trying to use the thickness of a dime and you can see that my wire is much thicker than the dime. So I'm confident that I have 12 gauge, but now you know how to determine which one you have. I use the Wago lever nuts. There's a three position lever nut and a five position. So three wire or five wire. These lever nuts are great for DIYers that feel comfortable with electrical projects, and they have a strip gauge right on the side to let you know how much insulation to strip off each of your wires. So using that strip gauge, I will strip off my hots and also strip off my neutrals. In addition, I will strip off one side of the pigtails and then all of these are gonna go in each of those lever nuts. Again, if you have three wires that were coming into your receptacle, you would use that five position WAGO. And this specific WAGO lever nut is the 221 model. Why I like it is because you can see through that housing and make sure that your wires are fully seated and secure both visually and with a pull test. Look down below this video in the description and you'll see all the tools I'm using and also links to these Wago lever nuts. So once we have the neutrals all set up, we'll do the same thing with the hots, running our three wires in, and then we'll have the pigtail sticking out. Remember, the pigtail should be at least six inches long when you're setting this up. And now we'll strip off the insulation off the hot and the neutral side using the strip gauge on the back of the receptacle. Now this strip gauge is meant for a wiring technique called back wiring, where you'll wire straight into the receptacle. And how that works is there's actually a small little gray plate you see there internally. You wanna make sure that's pushed in so that the wire will go between the screw terminal and that plate. And then when you tighten, this silver screw terminal for neutral, and then the gold one for hot, that will pinch those together and give a secure hold on your wires. And we'll do the same thing for the ground wire. 
So now everything's wired up, but we need to get back in the box. What I'm gonna do is I'll stick the neutrals with the Wago facing up, the hots with the Wago facing down, and press those in. Then I will fold the wires. So when I push the receptacle back in, the wires want to fold opposed to press out on the receptacle. So now we'll just tighten it up. It's always important to kind of line things up when you're getting, uh, getting your receptacle or switch back into the box, but it's even more important on this one because you have a larger face plate that's hanging off to the side. So if you're not level, it's gonna be noticeable. So what I'll do is I'll tighten it almost all the way up, then I'll use a torpedo level and just make sure I have everything where I want it and then do the final tightening to secure that in place. Now ground faces up with this design and you really don't have a choice. We did a whole video diving deep into that. NEC does not call out whether ground should be facing up or down, so it can go either way. Then we'll snap that wall plate into place. Looking good, and then we'll Reference the torpedo level again and just make sure everything's lined up, which it is. Now you want to make sure it's also flush to your wall. You can't have that receptacle sticking out or you'll get big gaps, but everything looks good with this install. So now we're ready to turn the power back on. We'll flip the breaker and then we'll test it out with our outlet tester. Seeing the two amber lights means everything's wired correctly and we're getting power and we'll most importantly test out the wireless charger. Looks great. So now lastly, let's talk about how fast that actually charges compared to a wired connection. So I did a little testing to see how fast does this Legrand wireless charging wall plate actually charge. So I did three different setups. The first setup uses a wired connection and it uses kind of the highest charging rate that I can get for my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which has a pretty big battery. So this is a 20 watt adapter. It goes USB-C to a lightning port, which then goes in the iPhone. So that will be my top of the line, fastest charging. The second setup uses wireless charging, but this uses the MagSafe setup. So USB-C to MagSafe. And then the third is the actual Legrand faceplate with the integrated wireless charger. So those are the three setups. I charged my phone for 15 minutes and I simply wanted to see what percentage increase in battery could I get across those 15 minutes. So what are the results? For the 15 minutes with the wired setup, what I saw was an increase of 17% battery. So 15 minutes connected with that wire connection, I got 17% increase in battery. Then with the MagSafe for 15 minutes, I increased by 9% battery. Then with the wall plate, it was the worst and that was only a 5% increase. So 15 minutes, 5% or about 20% of your battery per hour. I'm not overly impressed with those results, but to be honest, most people are using a setup like this, an old adapter to a lightning cable. This adapter is only five watts compared to the one I showed you earlier was 20 watts. So if you're using this, the wall plate will probably charge about the same rate as what you're getting with that adapter. So for me, this is a reasonable option. The cost is $60, so it's a little bit pricey, but I'm gonna install actually two of these in our kitchen so we can just put our phones in the cradle and pick up a little charge without having wires everywhere and missing adapters and such. But let me know what you guys think. Have you tried this out? Are you interested in it? Or do you have questions? Jump down in the comments and engage. We always appreciate hearing from you guys. And before you take off, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with your repairs and improvements around the house and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.